responding to a subscriber message of mine that mentioned that he tempted God in sin and he felt like God was speaking to him directly through one of my videos and that God is calling him and how to go about it. He doesn't know how to seek God, get to God. How does he even start? That's his question. So I want to make a video. If anyone else has any, uh, you know, questions or whatnot, I'll be gladly to make a video for you as well to help you on your way to get to seeking God. Uh, right. So, but it's not it's not difficult. It's not complicated. It comes down to some basic principles. Right. One, be real. You have to be real with God. Don't be fake. That's something I can't emphasize on that enough. Because right, he already sees the inner parts of you. So he knows when you mean it. He knows when you don't mean it. And if you don't mean it, tell him that you want to mean it. But that right now you don't mean it. In other words, if you don't love God, be like, God, I want to love you. It's better than saying, God, I love you. And your heart is far from him. The Bible talks about how people were speaking a lot of stuff, but the heart was far from, from him. And so he sees that. So that's the first thing. Whatever you're going to say to him, mean it. If you need help, there's no shame in asking for help from God, man. We all need help. So what, what, yeah, actually he loves that. He loves a humble heart. So the first thing I would tell you is like, get in a position where you're in a humble position. Usually I get on my knees. So I tell people to get on their knees because it just shows like he is Lord. And then it shows that you are not, and then you need him. And so then when we do that, when we get on our knees, it's a big deal, I believe. And so from that point, you can you can direct your prayer to Jesus Christ. And uh, and I just think that it's not about being eloquent. It's not about because that's religion, right? Religion is saying the right words. The right phrases, the right thing to get the, the, the so-called results. That's religion. But I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you to speak from your heart to God. Everybody's in a different place, in a different platform, a different level, a different mind frame, or a different. So, what worked for me is, you know, it, it, it came from my heart at that particular point in time. So, like I said, you know, the first thing, the basics is. To get right on track with God is just to say, God, I want to be on track with you. I want to be with you. I want to be connected to you. I want to, I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. Something as simple as that. You're, you're letting your heart be known to God, and He is listening. And uh, God Himself is humble. You know, uh, He wants us to be humble because He Himself is humble. And so, what that means is that when God, when God will, will listen to, to. Uh, a prayer, you know, and he's not looking for eloquent words and all that. He actually despises people that that uh, despises talk. And um, like, for example, there was a Pharisee in the Bible that he looked up straight to the sky. He's like, I fast twice a week. I, um, you know, I, I do all kinds of uh, my 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 all my all my ducks are in a row kind of thing. He was exalting himself. So he's like, the whole, the whole thing there was, I know you hear my prayers when I pray because look at me, I'm all polished up, I'm all, I do everything, all the law and this and that. And God did not hear his prayer. This is Bible. And so then in the same verse, it talks about the tax collector being um, a sinner, right? And because the tax collectors back then used to steal from the people. They used to tax them extra and steal that money, that extra money. So the tax collectors were hated in that time. And obviously, God, you know, is not in favor of any thief, right? So the tax collector had a moment, kind of like your moment, where he felt like, I'm not right with God, but I don't even know how to begin. I don't even know how to get right with him. So the tax collector didn't even look up to the sky said I'm not worthy I'm not deserving in his heart he's like man just have mercy on me 
So being simple as that, you saying I'm a guilty sinner, you know, have mercy on me. And then the Bible says that, that, that God heard the tax collector's prayer, but he did not hear the so-called religious prayer that the man made that was uh, doing all, checking off all the boxes and, and living the right type of life. God didn't hear his prayer. And so God was showing us his heart. And he was showing us, listen, if you come at me in this direction, I'm going to listen to your prayer. If you come all exalted, like, oh, you, like your crap doesn't stink, so to speak, like, you, like, like, um, you know, no, that, that, that doesn't fly with God. It doesn't fly with God at all. So, be sincere, be genuine, be real, be transparent with the Lord. Right? From that place, you could go all the way to the end of your journey. I'm not even going to say from there to here. I'm going to say from the, from where you're at all the way to the end of your journey with God, you can go with uh, having those uh, basic principles. Be real, be transparent, be genuine in all of your ways, bro. Wherever you find yourself in life, you know, you can always get on your knees and you can always bring that thing before the Lord and say, God, this thing has me. Pornography or weed or whatever, it, it has me, but I don't want it. I want you. Bring me people that can help me. Bring me a circumstance that can help me. Deliver me from this thing. How do you want to go about it? Show me. Reveal to me what you want me to do to help myself. I will follow you. Help me. Give me your grace to follow you. Give me your grace to not do this thing anymore. Right now, right now as I speak, the devil has me. But I don't want him to have me anymore. So I'm asking you, Lord, have mercy on me. Have grace on me. I need you to deliver me. If you don't deliver me, who will deliver me? These are prayers that will go a long way, man. But remember to mean it. Because those words that come out of your mouth, if you don't mean it, don't even, don't even bother saying it. You got to mean it. God responds to when people mean what they say. Okay, please get that. It's so important. You know, he responds to the frustration of where you're at. Right? When you're frustrated, he responds to that. People that are in hospital beds, that they're dying in the, you know, where, where they're at, they mean their prayer when they say, God, get me out of this hospital bed. I'll, I'll, I vow to you. I'll serve you the rest of my life if you get me out of this one. Trust me that they're not, they're not just uttering some words out of their mouth. Man, it's coming from a specific location on the inside that they mean it. It's coming from their soul. So I'm going to circle around that until you get and understand the fact that you have to mean what you say with God. You have to mean it. So when you ask him into your life, ask him into your life. But don't just say the words. The words don't mean nothing if you don't mean it. Please get that. Understand that. So many people bypass that part and that's like a, that's like the cake. You know what I mean? They look for the cherry, they look for the frosting, they look for the sprinkles. I'm talking about the cake, man. The cake is meaning it, right? You don't mean it, no, ain't nothing gonna happen. The, the wheels aren't gonna be moving if you don't, you ain't gonna be going nowhere, right? You gotta get in the vehicle, you gotta move, but the way you get in the vehicle and you move is by first having the Holy Spirit come inside of you so that you can move. So uh, I want you to do that, and let's start there, start there. Because I'm not going to flood you with a bunch of other stuff uh, for you to follow and do. Uh, you'll be bombarded. You'll be you'll be bombarded with so much information that you'll feel overwhelmed or something like that. And, and that's not the case here, because God is a God of grace. God is a God of mercy, love, compassion. And God, he, God is a God that moves you incrementally, slowly, step by step. God does not like to skip steps. He does not like to go fast. He does not want you to go from zero to 100 in, in, in a moment.
moment's notice because when you do that there you, you, you invite a whole lot of mistakes and errors to occur it's better to go nice and steady and slow and get it right than go a hundred miles per hour and have a wreck have a have a wreck and the devil can work with that so you know whatever it may be in my my brother that's bothering you it, just understand the Lord is for you and not against you. That's the first thing that you have to have in your mind. That he, the Bible says that he's not willing that anyone would perish, meaning go to hell. He doesn't want you to go to hell. So have the mindset that God is for you and not against you. He's, he's your hero, your friend, your father. And he's not there uh, rubbing his hands together saying, you know, uh, looking at you like you're your prey or something like that. Like, you know, that's the devil. Don't confuse one with the other. So, yeah, look at God like he's your best friend, man, because he really is. He's the only one that's faithful, right? And he's the only one that's really going to be there for you when all hell breaks loose, when everybody leaves your side, when the world turns its back on you, he's the only one that's going to remain. Okay? So have that in your heart and understand that he, God is love, okay? God is not judgment. He's not hate. He's not wrath. God is love. So start there, my brother. Start there and move from that platform forward and start asking God for what you need and what you want. The very fact that you watch these videos, you know, I just believe that he he maneuvers you, moves you with these videos in the direction you should go, right? And it's just a matter of following his, his lead of saying, okay, we're going in this direction. When he says we're going in this direction, don't go in this direction. Does that make any sense to you? Don't. Don't make it worse on yourself. Don't um, turn your back on God and then, and then what's it called? Uh, and then think it's going to work out for you. It's not. It's not going to work out. So, uh, but God is merciful. He's graceful, right? He knows the end from the beginning. So he already knew that you were going to make the mistakes that you were going to make. It didn't catch him by surprise. Right? That's comforting to know. For, for a lot of us to know that God already knew you were going to do that. And so when you did it, it's like, all right, get back up. Get back up. Follow me. Get back up. We're headed somewhere. Right? We're going somewhere. Right? And um, the journey is rocky sometimes. It's rocky, especially with the spiritual warfare. You know? And that's why he says walk by faith, not by sight. Don't walk with your feelings. Don't walk with your... Walk by faith and sight. Keep your eyes on the Lord, your mind on the Lord, your heart on the Lord at all times. And he will direct your path. Right? You know, you may have plans, but he will order your steps. And you put your heart in, in his direction, man. Just, just make him the center and then he will direct your path. And you won't have all these questions. You'll just follow him. He'll put it inside of you what church to go to. He'll put it inside of you who to visit, who to call, what to do. He'll put it inside of you. Just like he put it inside of you to ask these questions towards me. And look what you got out of it. You got a video out of it. In the same way, God's going to continue to tell you what to do. Ask questions. It's a good thing. Right? It shows that you're hungry and that you want to learn. And uh, God will respond. Okay, guys? Love you.